I think there are two ways you can see the world. You either see the sadness that's behind everything, or you choose to keep it all out. Your heart can't break if you don't let the world touch it. I wasn't lying when I said I don't blame her. What happened wasn't her fault. It was a couple days after all that stuff with Becky that I got the plane ticket to New York from my dad. I was excited to be back in the city, around Mrs. Calderon, too. I was kind of hoping it would be like the last time, like I could step back into being that same kid again. But as soon as I saw her, I could tell something was different. She was divorced. Turns out Mr. Calderon cheated on her for almost the whole time they were married. Mrs. Calderon said I should call her Angela now. That night I told her about what happened with Becky. I remember exactly what she said, right down to the kiddo part. It, it happens at different times for different people, but it happens to everybody. It's the worst part about growing up. Heartbreak. Realizing that bad things happen to people like you do. But it's a part of life. It seems like a pretty big part. That's why you have to believe that life is more than the sum of its parts, kiddo. I thought about what she said, but it didn't make much sense, and it didn't seem to be working for her in the first place. I kind of felt my heart breaking for her, but I knew that was no good. I wanted to do something for her, but there wasn't anything. There wasn't one thing I could really do. electricity wasn't in her eyes anymore. And I started to think that maybe the reason it wasn't in her eyes was because it wasn't there at all. Her eyes were still reflecting what was there, but now it was the sadness. I started to see it everywhere. Her face was different, but the same. I saw the sadness in every single one. I felt my heart break over and over, and each time, like the first time. I even saw it in my mom's face. I saw how much my dad had hurt her, and I saw how lonely she was, and how much she wanted me to be happy. It's the same with every parent. They want their kids to be happy, but they should know it always turns out the same. I don't know why, but I started to see it in Ryan worse than anybody. The first day after I got back, he was waiting for Becky, but she didn't show up, so I walked him home. The next day, I went to his class. All the words they were teaching him were, things to stay away from. There weren't any words like strawberry or kiss. You could tell he really liked this girl who worked there. But she just smiled at him like you do at a baby when they do something cute. I started to think that he knew. He knew that no matter what he did, he was never going to be a kid with a girl like that on his arm. He knew everything. He knew that nobody looked at him like a normal kid. People either laughed at him or felt sorry for him. He knew it all, but he couldn't do anything about it. He was trapped. I couldn't sleep. I hadn't slept since New York. I would lie there and think about Mrs. Calder, and I'd think about Ryan, and I felt things tight in my chest. I felt like I was drowning. It's all this sadness, and there's nothing you can do about it. And all I wanted was for it to go away. When I say I don't remember that day, I'm not lying. I wish I could remember, but I don't. At least not the stuff they want me to.